Okay, everybody. Um, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whichever you are experiencing today or at the moment. Uh, this is a second uh, video on, on uh, filtration. We'll cover comments and tips, testing, maybe cycle analysis, expression, cake washing, medium pretreatments. And again, these, these lectures are primarily based upon the filtration book cited here. Anyway, it's an excellent book. Expensive, but excellent. So uh, I was fortunate enough in my various travels to uh, go to a meeting of the American Filtration Society, AFS. And I also participated in their roundtable discussion or their discussion, open discussion about filtration. And they, they were talking about all the different, they made various different comments about filtration. Now, these are industrial people, okay? So they know a lot about what they're talking about since they're running filtration units. And I sat there, uh, I recorded all they said as much as I could. And what we'll do, we'll go through those. I appreciate the American Filtration Society. They seem to be very nice people, very welcoming people. And I appreciate uh, uh, them teaching me, which is uh, uh, very important. Anyway, these are some of the things that both popped up. I sort of reorganized them just, just a touch. And the first question is why use a filter at all? Why not use a continuous centrifuge? And that's true. That's one of the options that you have. You can filter or you can uh, centrifuge or you can use decantation. Those are the three primary ways of separating a solid from a liquid. Sometimes filtration has an advantage and sometimes centrifugation has an advantage and you're not quite sure uh, which you should use. Of course, uh, centrifuge is pretty much a fixed piece of equipment, whereas filtration equipment is quite varied. So typically you're looking for large areas, proper, medium, and low cost. You're looking for thin cakes that do not bind because of rapid filtration. Gravity and vacuum filtration are nice. Can the filter allow cake washing? That's a big concern. Thin cakes help because they're easy cake washing help here. Is the system have easy discharge? Is the discharge complete? Easy discharge and complete discharge. Can the medium, the filter cloth, or medium can take high pressure drop? Question. Low, vacu low vacuum levels do not help in vacuum filtration. If you have a poor vacuum system, it doesn't help you at all. Poor vacuum pumps cause lots of problems, including long filtration times. Holes in medium, which lead to feed and air going through the filtrate side. All right, so you gotta watch and examine your media medium. Back blowing for cake just charged may not be uniform. It leads to the separation of medium from the supports and drainage gr uh, grids. Anyway, you should pay attention now you're doing back blow. Is it uniform? Uh, Air distribution is difficult. Difficult because you have to have the same pressure drop everywhere. If you don't have the same dry pressure drop, you're going to have portions of your filter uh, cake to receive more airflow than the other. Air leakage into a vacuum by poor gas heating, seals, and improper seating occurs. You should be aware of air leakage under vacuum situations. In a dryer where airflow is substantial, 30% of the airflow could wind up being actually leakage. Poor gate discharge can, uh, be, can be because the cake is too thin or too high in moisture. Right? 
to high and moisture can lead to downstream processing problems. Blinded medium is always a problem. Deep blinding can be difficult. So you have replacement medium available. Blinding can be caused by slimes. Slimes are very fine particles that are essentially uh, flakes, flaky material. They build up like you would build a brick wall. There are clays in the feed, and feed is dilute to dilute. Fix the process before filtration. Filtration is difficult in, that, in and of itself. And if you already know you have a problem upstream, for example, you have a place where fines or slimes are being produced, or you find that your pump is actually a hammer mill, don't expect the filtration unit to fix your processing problems. Example, if fines are produced, don't expect filter to perform. Uh, you should spend some time. Uh, I don't, I haven't got them presented here, but there's equations for flow rate through a porous medium where there is a porosity function. It's like porosity squared over one minus porosity. You should go study the calculations and see how small changes in porosity can change significantly your production rate. That would that is a reason why filtration tends to be so unpredictable. The porosity goes down, so production will go down. It doesn't go down 10%. It's nonlinear, and uh, production may go down from 10 to 1, right? Change in fines. And you may not have control over the fines production. Correct the situation upstream before the filter. Right? Again, filtration is hard enough, so don't make it difficult. Filtration rate it can largely it can be largely a function of process. The rate is determined by chemistry or how the precipitation was formed. In a slow filtering precipitation results, if a slow filtering precipitate results. Just the chemistry, fix the mixing. Okay, obviously your particles are being formed by some sort of mechanism. And it could be because there are fast reactions occurring in a reaction zone that you don't understand. Uh, so controlling that reaction zone will control the precipitate reaction. In the paint industry, completely opposite, they uh, have the, um, the filtration, they have the production of what they call grit. And I'm quite sure grit is produced in a reaction zone that the mixing company, uh, excuse me, the paint companies really don't understand. Brush on surfactant solutions to improve cake discharge. If the periphery of the medium doesn't discharge, coat the medium in that area with rubber-based paint to prevent cake buildup to begin with. Monitor feed quality, identify feed fluctuations not caused by filtration. If you have feed, if you're continuous and you have feed fluctuations, uh, it will affect your filtering. Don't add water or dilute unless necessary. Make sure medium attaches to the drainage grid, no bypasses to the drainage grid should be permitted. Expressing reduces moisture, very good. Use plastic uh, plate and frames for larger presses. Basically that means less weight if you use plastic. Low filtration rates require large areas, right? So you want to possibly, let's go back. Low filtration rates causes large areas. You might consider using two types of pumps, a fast fill pump for the first few minutes. And then after you got the fill pump, after the process is filled, then you go over to a high pressure pump. High pressure will lower the moisture content in many cases. 
feed may have to be flocculated for good filtration. Flocculation gets rid of fines, changes the porosity of the cake, uh, changes production. Flocculants are very, uh, tend to be low concentrations. So you have a good flocculation system. Slimes, uh, thick and slimes before filtration. You're looking at one or two pounds of flocculant per ton of slimes. Again, uh, you're trying to get at the surface area of the slimes to affect their size. Cakes too thin, too high in moisture, a lengthened filtration times, you might want to use expression, want to use higher pressures. And say a plate and frame you have, or somewhere where you have a plate, uh, plate filter, filtration machine, you might want to use a mechanical plate shifter. For high clarity, a pre coat is probably needed. A pre coat is often the uh, builder aid, build it up. Uh, Watch out for flocculation deterioration. Detention time is important. And, uh, flocculation is a time-dependent process. If you don't have it done correctly uh, and act on it, it will deteriorate with time. And if, since it deteriorates with time, the question I pose to you is, do you know any, have any data on that? Avoid heat losses, right? You want to heat, you want to run hot, right? You don't want to cool. Avoid heat losses, which may reduce filtration rate. Mm -hmm. Filtration rate is proportional to viscosity. So if you uh, have hot system, you usually have low viscosity. You run cold, uh, geez, you're higher viscosity. Heat losses increase velocity, viscosity. Preheating the feed, now that's interesting. Preheated feed may lower viscosities. I was saying there's three ways of separating solids from liquids, filtration, certification, and decantation, or countercurrent decantation, CCD. So when you have filtration rates below 25 pounds per hour foot squared, obviously CCD is extremely economic, it's economical because you have just nothing there and just have a tank and it sits there. Oftentimes two stage CCD can replace one stage filter if the solids are difficult to filter. Washing should not occur or should not be used if the, crake, the cake cracks, right? Non-uniform washing will occur under set with crack, cracked cakes. Cake cracks indicate higher moisture content may be necessary. Minimize wash water or wash liquid, liquid. Lowering or raising the temperature may help clarification behavior. Paper on the medium. Okay, so you have the medium, and then you put the paper on top of the medium, uh, rice paper or the Japanese type, very thin type paper. Uh, can improve clarity. So you no longer just have one medium, you may have two mediums. Fiery fine particles generate very low and econo uneconomical filtration rates. Don't form them to begin with. All right. Use another processing technique if they occur. Well, we don't have much selection here, do we? Decantation or centrification. Wash, sorry, the idea, don't form them to begin with, is a big point. So if your filtration process is not working, so what do you do? Think about fixing your filtration unit. When the unit filtration is not working, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to work, you know. The filtration unit has inherited a problem upstream, Okay, and the fact that your filtration unit is not working, you don't want to look at the filtration. You want to look upstream for the real true source of the problem. Use another processing technique if they occur. Uh, wash liquor may have an effect 
harsh liquid liquor temperature may have an effect on cake discharge. High pH, hmm, already may I ha already have a flocculating effect. Some factors are very site specific, like your water. Your water is con uh, carrying in contaminants. Wash with a flocculant and a coagulant. There you go. Kind of an interesting concept. Vacuum boxes can be motorized for raising and lowering. Recycle filtrate may cause problems to build up. Build up. Uh, avoid recycle when possible. At what point does binding occur? Filter cloth blinding studies should be done on the unit. Pre-cuts overcome blinding and bleeding problems. Particle size for maximum, uh, uh, for practical minimum settling velocities of one meter per hour is 18 microns in one cent of poised liquid. Specific gravity 2.6. Filtration and sedimentation problems improve as the particle size increases. Uh, uh, testing, testing, who's got the test? Impossible to find published experimental data in the literature for design. Dating experimental data are essential. A logical methodology exists to dating data. Filtrate clarity, permissible solvent, soluble content, porosity, liquid content, rate of cake buildup. Other decisions have to be made. Use of flocculant, use of filter aid. Thickening by sedimentation, hydrocloning or fluid cloning, pre filters or thickeners, good idea before filtration. Choice of filter based upon the rate of held up, filter medium, wash and be liquid and hydraulic or by expression. <laughs> Solution of a filtration problem involves practical testing. Okay, there's maybe two approaches. Actually, there's probably three or four. One is to rely on equipment specialists and vendors. Now, that's not a bad idea. Okay. Or the other is to rely on your plant personnel. And the third is I would use the plant as experiment. Experiment, right? Your plant data is telling you a whole bunch. And I assure you, you haven't properly analyzed your plant data. You may think you have analyzed your plant data, but no, no, not really. Okay, gang. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's always more, as I tell my kids at university level, I says, whatever you do, it's not good enough yet, all right? So there's always more. Uh, it's a restatement of continuous improvement, ha ha. Large scale filtration experiments are difficult. However, uh, your plant data is doing it for you all the time. It's just that you haven't read into you got these, what, F test, chi square, and all this stuff they do. Practical filtration testing is available. Simple test with a butyl funnel or a niche filter. You can find out a whole lot of information. Filtration rate is a function of pressure drop. Provide information how difficult filtration will be. Gives the rate of build up, cake build up, indicate whether pretreatment is needed can yield design data for vacuum filters. Constant pressure filtration is ideal for testing. Right. Remember I suggested the taking a test tube, put your slurry that you got to filter in the test tube if you can, shake it up and invert it on a blotting paper. Blotting paper, old standard blotting paper. And the as the Slurry drains from the test tube, the inverted test tube. The, the liquid goes out through the blotting paper. So you have this liquid front going out further and further in the blotting paper. And you draw circles. And as 
the liquid drains out of the test tube, the cake builds up. So really you're studying cake formation in a test tube in a very simple test. And if you do this long enough, uh, you'll learn a whole bunch about your process. The time it takes for the liquid from the plotting paper to move, say, an inch, that time is going to be proportional to your cake resistance. So if you have a variable slurry and you want to know if it's difficult to filter or not going to be difficult to filter, you do this inverted test tube test. Constant pressure filtration is ideal for testing, not many variables, okay. Equipment to use, okay, constant pressure filtration bomb. Pressure volume time relationships can be obtained, filter aid, you're looking for the type of filter aid and the optimum quantity. Obviously, laboratory tests will filter differently than the plant. So you're not, there's no absolute science here, right? Because the plant is receiving material from the production line from wherever. A laboratory, well, it may get the same material and you haven't kept track of what it's, where it's been. So uh, laboratory tests uh, and plant tests will be different. How much they're going to be different, function a lot of different stuff. But uh, she recognized that plant data is plant data, laboratory is laboratory data. And you to try to figure out that why there's differences, well, that's good. I wish you luck on that. Cake formed on small scale would be markedly different than cake formed on large scale. This is very true. Differences are due to method of de deposition, wall effects, and non-uniformity of flow. You think your cake is uniform. Your cake is not uniform. In the test tube, inverted test tube, your cake is likely to be uniform. However, if I'm building up cake across uh, a four square, four or five square foot filter plane, I assume that the cake will not be uniform from top to bottom, perhaps. Be careful of data interpretation and experiments in theory often differ well. Let's just be honest about it. They differ. You should be run 20, 30 minutes minimum, right? So you have all the time effects disappearing. Viscous slurries are always a problem. So oh, look at that you heat. Oh, look at that. I told you a bad thing. Dilute. Increased filtration rate will be helpful. Experimentation requires art. So be artful. How's that? Addition of filter aid. Test to see if you need a filter aid. Test for the greater filter aid. Determine filter aid amount. For pre-coat, determine how filter aid to how to add the filter aid to a mixture. Right. Basically, a filter aid will reduce resistance to flow through the cake. It opens up the cake, makes it more porous. Filtration rate uh, requires clarification. Filter A will help. Filter A is a base to hold the cake. Need to run a complete series of tests, preliminary tests, basic, te basic tests, check tests, test tests, who's got the test. Preliminary test involves single filter aid, determine if a filter aid is needed and how much. Basic test compares filter aids. Clarity is okay and increase the particle size of the filter aid. When you increase the particle size of the filter aid, you're likely to make the filter aid more poor, excuse me, the cake more porous. Bigger the particles, more porosity there is. Okay. So if you got clarity, you want clarity at the high of the largest particle size, right? Filter aid, largest particle size. Clarity is not okay. You decrease the particle size of the filter aid. However, when you decrease the particle size, you change the porosity and you change the production rate. You might also wish to figure out filtration size and, or filter aid size to production rate. Particle side of filter aid should be careful. It should be about the, that of the filter cake material. 
particle size of the filter edge should be about the same size as the cake material. Select filter edge, which provides required clarity and maximum throughput at the lowest costs. In filter edge test, throughput increases as the dosage increases. Okay, this is the idea that filter aid will open up the cake. Desired dosage occurs just at the point of diminishing returns. Okay, clarification and cake filtration are different processes requiring different interpretations. Data interpretation is very important. For viscous liquors, uh, Filtration bombs must be modified to provide larger filtration area. Viscosity goes up. Uh, production goes down. But if you increase area, production goes up. Tests, uh, early time data can often be neglected. Typically, first five minutes may be just startup, uh, startup data. Pressure, volume, cake buildup, time data can be used to estimate throughput for several hours. Extrapolation becomes very unreliable at five hours. Five hour filtration times probably mean problem exists. Again, five hour filtration times means the problem exists. Right. Improvements can be made. After finding the right type of filter aid, the grade of the filter aid should be determined. Some grades are too coarse for solids to be filtered, some are too fine and require high pressure drops. Optimum dosage is often independent of filter aid grade. Usually what happens is optimums tend to be flat. There's no single spike there, it's just a broad hump. Um, Throughput and cake thickness are measured. Uh, tests should be done to examine the effects of scale. Try a filter having the next size larger, establish the effects of scale on your size. I mean, excuse me, size effects. Cake discharge and pre-coating usually takes two hours. Hmm. Anyway, so let's do a cycle analysis. Okay. You have in a cycle filtration. This is not from the meeting. I don't think so. I think this is coming out of a book somewhere or something. You have filtration. Yeah, this is out of a book. Washing, de and expression, drying, cake discharge, cleaning, reassemble, pre coat. So there you go. How long does each take? Which one is the most difficult to do? How do I improve that? Not well studied, well documented area. What are the times for each? What are the parts of the cycle which are too long and why? Which part of the cycle is limiting? Why? Time studies are necessary, filtration, washing, and discharge time. I ran across a couple of guys who were talking with me. And their operation was they filter and then they clean their filter and then wash the filter, clean the filter and wash it, and then start filtration again. So they filtered, washed, excuse me, washed their filtration unit, cleaned it, filtered again, cleaned it, filtered again, cleaned it. And each, each operation was about the same length and time. Filtering was the same amount of time as washing and cleaning up. And they asked how to double their production. It's the question. I said, well, you, you uh, instead of filter, wash, filter, wash, you filter, 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 and clean your uh, offline. So instead of having one filter press going on or one filtering device going on, you have two. Right? You clean one while you're filtering with the other. Quite reasonable, easy solution. Of course, it cost you some money to buy the second unit. Where does process deterioration occur first in a cycle as the processing rate increases? Where's my, there's a wheel in here, right? Here you go. So here I have the cake formation. I perhaps have some sort of suction 
to get rid of the excess moisture. And then I might have a wash cycle here. And then up here, I have a drying cycle. And then I have a discharge. So the question is, is uh, so I increase the RPM. Everything works well at low RPM. But as I increase the RPM, one of these is not going to do so well. Okay, which one is that? And then I focus on that, try to improve it. So I can increase the rotational speed again. Figure out which one's deteriorated and improve upon it. So your equipment may have been designed for maybe two revolutions a minute, perhaps. But if you continually improve it, it may be up to 10, 20, 30 revolutions per minute. Not 30, I doubt. Well, anyway. This follows an old statement I learned, heard from uh, a couple of people from uh, Amico, not Amico, uh, Mobile. This was before. Sorry, people, I lived before the Mobile Exxon merger and Mobile. And they said, if we ain't learning, we ain't burning. Excuse me, if we ain't burning, we ain't learning. That's the way it was. If we ain't burning, if we are not pushing our equipment, and we're not learning. So they had a process that was designed for a certain throughput, and they were way above that. In fact, in some cases, uh, I've run across companies that are literally design experts in their equipment. Their equipment is specialized, okay? And there may be one or two equipment vendors out there that can take care of their needs. Yes, you can have it built. So instead of going to a vendor to get their equipment, you go to a local machine shop, local machine shop, you tell them what you want to build and they'll build it for you, right? So I find it fascinating that with this pushing the limits of your equipment that many companies do, they push the limits of equipment that is available on the market. Hence, they can't buy it. They have to build their own, so to speak, to their own design specifications. That's pretty amazing. Ran into a helical ribbon mixer one time. And somehow, uh, it had high power, this mixer. Moved slowly, but when it moved, it had significant power. And this is for processing some solids. Okay. And a bolt fell down in and got caught between in the clearance between the helical ribbon and the wall. And this mixer essentially just folded the bolt into the wall. It was so powerful. You got this big old six inch bolt, maybe a half inch in diameter, and it comes along and just folds it into the wall. And that's what that I was rather impressed with that piece of equipment. In other words, you don't have to accept what's commercially available. You design your own. You probably already have some uh, some processes where original equipment depends upon you making it. Sort of like the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers did not go out and buy an airplane, right? Anyway, go back to where we were. Where does the process deterioration occur first in the cycle? Cycle analysis is often implant comparisons of cycle limits. Some problems and limits are site specific, some are equipment specific. What are the process, proper process measurements to be made? Any new technology of use? Discharge and reassembly or independent filtration time? Very important, discharge and reassembly. Uh, wash rates are proportional filtration rates. That's interesting. This is the idea that filtration, cleaning, filtration, cleaning, cleaning is often the same amount of time as filtration. Uh, wash times are proportional filtration times. Often uh, filtration and wash times are twice the discharge time. 
often the maximum average filtration rate occurs where the filtration time equals the downtime. Hmm, there you go. And then we have our five stages we were talking about. Different stages of the process must be balanced on the drum. So it's the weak, weakest link concept here. One operation will control the cycle. It could be the cake build up. It could be the solid suspension, the solid submergence. So cake build up is one millimeter per minute. That's pretty slow. Up oh, two centimeters, that's pretty quick. Solid submergence, 75 is pretty high. 40% might be. Filtration time, seven minutes. Wow. Equations are often available for cake formation rates and mass per time for drums and belts and are useful in protecting the effects of operating conditions. Okay, if washing is controlling, cake thickness might have to be reduced. Just charge may require fixed cake thicknesses, a fixed cake thicknesses may require, get rid of that A, may require fixed cake thicknesses, which then controls filtration rate. Okay, discharge is a function of cake thickness. Right. Is it? That's an interesting question. Uh, rotational speed can be adjusted to satisfy limiting process. The filter valve bridge may be adjusted to delay the start of a vacuum, perhaps. Slurry level can be increased or decreased to control filtration, cake formation, right? The size of your cake uh, depends upon the submergence zone here. You got the slurry level indicated. So anyway, this shows you how a disc is discharged. They have a discharge uh, arm in there. So we'll end this questions and answers. Okay, expression cake washing and medium. Uh, this is uh, medium or media. Uh, it's a real complicated area. And I got some stuff in here about media, which I summarized out of reading the uh, the book. But um, what can I say? There's a lot of weeds over in this, lots of different stuff in media. It's not nearly as simple as you might think of, right? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about expression, a little bit about cake washing, and then maybe we uh, briefly uh, highlight not extensive detail about media because you know, you won't necessarily it won't necessarily stick, so to speak. But anyway, expression. Hmm. Now, what the devil is expression? Well, have you ever heard of espresso coffee? Same sort of thing. First thing you want to know or realize is the porosity of your cake is not uniform. The layer near the filler, filler medium is probably compact possibly dry. Cake surface may be sloppy and soupy, right? Increasing filtration pressure may increase dryness of the cake, affects the layer near the medium. The remainder may remain unchanged. So increasing filtration pressure may not, cannot deliquor the cake. The liquoring the cake becomes increasingly important Different ways of delickering. Drainage, you could have drainage caused by vacuum, centrifugation, vibration, liquid suction. Hydraulic delickering, uh, this is what expression is, is to get rid of the, the uh, filtrate that's still in the cake. Filtration kind of, uh, cl consolidation in the press, you might try reverse flow of wash water. That's something. Huh? Got the old standard wash. Well, try washing in reverse direction. 
Mechanical expression, you can have hydraulic presses, membrane compression by pneumatic or hydraulic pressure. You have a bladder, you're putting high pressure on one side of the bladder, squeezes the material on the other side. Belts and rollers and screw pressers. You might have combined mechanical and hydraulic expression. Wonder what mechanical is versus hydraulic. Expression is separation of liquid from a two phase solid liquid system by compression. Squeezing tea bags, an example. Espresso coffee, I'm not quite sure what, whether the coffee is squeezed, I think, right? Anyway, if I take a look, uh, three categories I have constant pressure, constant rate, variable pressure rate, just like filtration does. I have two mechanisms involved. I have filtration, again, and consolidation. So if I take a look at this, I have thickness as a function of time, expression time, I guess. So the slurry is up here. So I hit it with significant exp uh, com compression, basically, right? Expression, I hit it with the, the uh, thickness drops. Then I may have a consolidation period. So there's actually maybe two. If I have a semi-solid, it quickly reaches consolidation much more quickly. Exactly what a semi-solid is defined as is another matter. But I suspect that this would be interesting for you to take, uh, take data on the cake thickness as a function of time. And also, you would probably want to track the moisture as well, how much liquid is coming out. Filtration part of expression proceeds like filtration at constant pressure. Filtration is squeezed, thickness versus times recorded. Filtration process ends, and then you have cake contraction mostly stops. Consolidation begins when the uh, cake passes into a semi solid. Solids creep and compress. Particles in there may actually distort. Additional de liquoring if you're at high enough pressure, they may change shape. Additional de liquoring, local void fraction solids increases, de liquoring rate and consolidation is much smaller than filtration. Compressed cakes also have some uh, residual elastic properties. Efficiency for expression is used, is increased when two or more sides are used for drainage. There you go. Right, if you add more channels for the flow to leave, it will certainly improve efficiency. Consolidation can significantly improve with permeable flow channels placed normal to the drainage surface. Efficiency depends upon the number of channels. So I don't know if you've uh, had an expression or not where you have channels inside your cakes. Changing the direction of feed and filtration rate, filtrate rate can lead to a marked reduction in moisture. The porosity of the cake is reduced. Mechanical compression is by feed pressure. Hmm. Reversing uh, wash liquor flow can uh, reduce porosity. Reduced porosity can cause the cake interface to move. Should be careful not to crack the cake. So we're gonna look at some different equipment here. Okay, expression equipment. Hydraulic presses have been used for, use for centuries. I guess when you have, say, a bunch of people in a big vat of grapes and they're stomping the grapes, right? I don't know if you call that uh, expression or not. Anyway, the old stomping the grape routine here. Okay. Expression presses uh, developed in the 90s. I don't know if that 1990s, I, it's 1990s, not 2090s, right? Anyway, making sure, not 1890s. I hope it's not 1890s. Of course, these expression presses are always been around. Uh, claim that they're just new might be true, but they, they, different designs, you have uh, box, pot, curb, cage, tube, filter presses with compression devices are common. Material may be contained in a bag or free. There you go. 
material is sometimes heated with steam. That's interesting. Wonder why that's done. Okay, uh, so we have our recess plate here, right? And then in here we have a membrane. So the membrane is not has not been enlarged there. Over here you have enlarged the bladder or the membrane bladder, and you squeeze the cake by doing so. So at some point you've taken the filtrate, and then you uh, go to uh, this bladder to squeeze your cake, and then you have the expression fluid. Now the two fluids may not be the same, right? You may or may not wish to fix those. Anyway, then you have cake discharge, right? So then we repeat the uh, subject of method in here. You have the filter filtration, and then you have the application of the membrane or bladder that squeezes the cake. So you have the fluid leaving, and then you have cake discharge over here. So highly efficient process, right? The serious issue is whether uh, the cake releases, uh, what sort of quality of cake release you have. Expression may contain some solids, express liquids may contain solids. Compression often comes from compressed air, 20 atmospheres. Membranes are used when you should be careful about excessive heat and solvents, which are harm membranes. So continuous presses, VDIS, tower, screw, belt. VDIS is introduced to the widest gap between the rotating discs and compressed as the discs rotate together. Usually the gap is at the top, you're relying on gravity. Filtration allows gravity filtration followed by roll compression. So we take a look at that. Here we don't have any bladder, but what we have, well, not showing. There's a Larnix and a Numa, one company that has bladders. They do the filtration and they squeeze it. Here's the idea of the V disc. Feed comes in, and by the time, uh, at the exit, the two discs are very close together, or very wide here. The liquid comes out. I wonder how they do orange juice. And, you know, you have the oranges coming in, squeeze it, and juice goes out the bottom. Anyway, so I guess orange juice production, you might see it in Costco or Sam's Club or whatever, they're making orange juice. Here we have, uh, Slurry comes in, uh, filtrate slurry comes in, hits two belts. The distance between the belt uh, is, becomes smaller and the liquid has to go somewhere. So probably got cloth, supporting belt, compression rollers, drive. Then we have two converging belts and it goes through a series of rollers. All along here, you have uh, compression and liquid being generated from the cake. We have the belt. Uh, materials placed between two fiber belts, clasped between the rollers. Screw presses, there you go. You have feed. And as you go further and further on down, the uh, clearance in here is smaller and smaller, squeezes the material. Hopefully the uh, wall is porous, so you have drainage, or you take it off at different pressure taps. I mean, anyway. Cake washing. Now, I'm gonna recognize a couple things here. Washing uh, displaces the original liquor eventually breaks through the cake, 
Lush liquor does not displace the original liquor completely. Residuals remain. Further washing will remove 50% of the remainder. So you may go down to 90. That means 10% still in there. And so you take another 5% away. Your major obstacle is diffusion. This is the only, uh, this is your major resistance, I should say. It is also the only mechanism for solvent, sol solute re solvent removal. Better to repulp and wash again. Now, well, that may be true. Or uh, during repulping, you may allow the drainage to occur. Difficult to remove more than 90% of the original solute. Well, that may, uh, solvent, solute, solute. Best to determine washing performance by experiment. Hmm. Amount of wash liquid varies considerably between batch and continuous. Continuous, you may wash a half to two wash, two washes. Batch operations have longer washes. Efficiency will drop off, but your the fact you have multiple washes could lead to an advantage. Eventually, you can get this stuff out. Plus, with a batch operation, the cake is probably sitting there, and you can do other things like heat it. Mm -hmm. Effective cake wash time is most difficult to correlate. Mm -hmm. The degree of solute removal specified, wash volume can be found. Here's the problem we got here. So we have the, the cake up here. And we uh, have the initial plug coming through. So the original concentration you're push, pushed out is right, represented by this. And then you have the wash liquid in here. And you see the trap liquid is still in there, very similar to oil being trapped in a oral reservoir. Right, so it might, it might be the techniques used in getting oil out of the ground may be helpful in getting residual material out of a filter cake. Same problem. You got very tight, small flow distances, excuse me, flow, so flow sizes. You have situations where residuals left inside. So I wonder if there's any cross fertilization between the oil industry with recovery of increased enhanced oil recovery and uh, pushing uh, residual material from a filter cake. Similar problem. Physics should be the same. Fluid properties or the properties might not be the same. Anyway, so we have this idea that we push the wash water out, I mean the uh, solute out, and then it goes down. This will be the wash volume, W for wash volume, over the volume that's actually, total volume that's actually in there. And this would be a concentration change. So if I wash twice, it's trying to tell you that it can get all the stuff out, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna always have some sort of reason. Right. The uh, front here, this is sort of a front, might start up here with the initial material that goes through quickly, and you all come down like this. So two washes, right? Washes can take two extremes, simple washing and thorough washing. Might consider washing with a flocculant and coagulant. coagulant. Delickering by suction, vacuum left, left on to remove some of the li liquor, may have uh, capillary suction. Useful when particles are greater than 10 microns. Non-Newtonian filtration, oh my goodness gracious. Whenever you hear non-Newtonian, geez, all those kinds of things happen. The, the uh, pressure drop, across the cake is going to be proportional to the viscosity, right? The fluid viscosity is uh, controlled by uh, power law. 
So what you do is you take all the equations that were developed for a Newtonian fluid, which is what, and you replace everything in those equations with the apparent viscosity. Or you rewrite the equations in terms of force and use a power law. Okay, and away you go. I'm not saying it's the absolute correct way. I'm certainly, that's the first cut on the problem. All right. Denser cakes are formed with decreasing values of flow uh, behavior index. That's the exponent on the shear rate. All equations can be in terms of an apparent viscosity. Most non Newtonian flow equations are worked with this concept. Overall, non Newtonian filtration is similar to that of Newtonian filtration. So, hmm. I get in trouble if I. Uh, it's been my experience that you know, I get in trouble for saying this, but rheology generally doesn't matter. Okay. It's my experience in mixing, right? Until it does. Now, don't, don't attack me for the first statement without appreciating what I said in the second statement. Rheology doesn't matter until it does. Now, the real question is, when does it do? When does rheology matter? And conservative estimate is rheology matters about 20% of the time. It could possibly matter 30% of the time. But generally speaking, across the board, this guy with 30% help him out a bit. And uh, recognize that, you know, life's complicated, so to speak. Delickering, uh, uh, again, uh, rheology is not important until it is. And it's maybe 20 or 30% of the time it's important. So uh, what can I say? And during those times that it's important, it can be really important. <laughs> okay. When you have a non-Newtonian fluid climbing the shaft where you have viscoelastic effects and the stuff climbs up over your mixer out on the plant floor, well, yeah, that's a problem, right? That's a real problem. Anyway, uh, delickering uh, and dewatering are greatly enhanced by decreasing flow index, shear thinning fluids. If you have shear thickening fluids, hmm, uh, shear thickening fluid, an example would be the liquid uh, diarrhea medicine, KO pectate uh, is an example of a product. If you pour a KO pectate out of the bottle, it actually, a high shear rates at the lip of the bottle you will notice, forms a cake there as you pour it out. I mean, it, uh, the resistance to flow for a shear thickening fluid when you increase the shear rate, suddenly it's no longer a fluid, it becomes a solid, or it becomes, believe it or not, a cake buildup. So it's interesting, you have a shear thickening fluid that forms its own cake. Oh, there you go. Uh, that'd be fun to play with. Delegging, dewatering, and greatly enhanced by decreasing flow index. Internal cake flocculation may occur, which just squeezes the cake. Hmm. This may not necessarily be a non Newtonian effect. Dewater with a flocculant. Anyway, I promised that we would talk about. Medium, only briefly, however, I do not want to go into the weeds. There's a sincere levels of different variety of weeds and uh, many, many different filtration problems exist. Many filtration machines exist. And as a result, there's also many, many of the filter medium exists. So there's all sorts of selections that can be made. 
Uh, obviously, you want to separate the cake without blinding, bleeding, or deterioration. Success and performance level often depend upon the medium. Multiple uh, multiples of medium are available. Large number of possible exists. Medium should fit the machine task. There, this is an important one right here. There is an international symposium on filter medium. Medium. So, you know, if you're into filtration, uh, I don't know where these conferences are. Uh, you might want to attend those conferences. What I find uh, personally from my own experiences with going to conferences, if you're a young person, it's great. Smart thing a young person should do at conferences is talk to the older people, the older folks. The uh, older folks know a lot of stuff. And once you get them talking, they're very, very open. And they're very nice people. I usually find that there's lots of nice people. People your own age, if you're young, tend to be highly competitive between themselves. So that may not be a good place to give information. However, you know, the older folks uh, tend to open up and like to talk to the younger people coming along. There's less competition between the old and the young. Anyway, it's just a just an observation. So if I was to go to these symposiums, well, first off, I'm an old person, right? So I'm I'm out of the picture, so to speak. But the information that I have obtained by just simply talking to the older folks is, is unbelievable how much they're willing to share with you. Especially if you're not at the same company. If you're at the same company, then you're in competition with each other, perhaps. But if you're not in the same company, you know, you might. Eh, people are generally nice people. Uh, so, anyway, I don't want to get into the weeds here. Apparently, there's cake formation media and then the deep bed filtration medium. Uh, mats, pads, cloths, ceramics, interesting internal sieving, electrostatic attachment, impingement, uh, retention with no blinding, good cake discharge with no sticking, cleaning, adequate cleaning of media, good physical strength, resistance to conditions, good resist, uh, resistance to deterioration by microorganisms, failing any of those. Testing is very important. All kinds of, uh, I like to point out the membrane here. And you have all kinds of stuff in here. This is lifted from that book. Okay. Again, I don't know the level of sophistication that computer programming has been developed for flow through porous media, but uh, they have computer programs that potentially could generate these types of uh, structures, and then you pass flow through them. Numerically, that is. Choice of media, what particle has been, re uh, yeah, requirements may be relaxed. Spraying with fungicides or herbicides, right? Which is desired, which is resistance. You want, you want the medium to be low resistance, right? Low pressure drop, right? You don't want to waste your pressure drop on medium. And the pressure drop is usually 10% of the total pressure drop, right? So keeping the medium clean, poor size does not have an effect, does not have to be smaller than the particle size. Particles are nasty little things. I don't know if you realize it or not. They may be 10 micron in size, but they have long right. So you have this pipe two inches in diameter or an inch in diameter, and you have these 20 micron particles, and eventually they'll bridge that pipe shut. Or bridge that pipe to the point where the flow area has re been reduced. One of the disasters, nuclear disasters, 
I think San Simeon Valley out in California, if I'm not mistaken, 1957. The question is, how much is Los Angeles worth? Right. What happened is um, had a nuclear reactor and it was one of these fancy liquid salt, uh, molten salt reactors, nuclear reactors. And they had a pump. They had, you know, extraordinary different pump to pump this stuff. And it's hot, right? And the level of sophistication is they had to make a double mechanical sealer. They had to worry about the sealing of that pump. And what happened was the material that sealed was used in the mechanical seal licked leaked into the sodium, liquid sodium, okay? Can you imagine that material from the seal leaking into liquid sodium? And who cares? It happens all the time, right? Except for the problem that came about. Apparently, those particles form some sort of extraordinary chemistry or whatever, started to bridge across one of the pipes in the nuclear core, one of the fuel rods. Uh, you had the fuel rods, and between the fuel rods, you had these pipes of cooling water. And so what, would ha what was going to ha what happened is in regions where there was less flow, poor flow distribution, you had uh, less flow, the, the, these, these particles of this sealant material bridged the pipe, okay? Extraordinarily bridged the pipe. Closed off that portion of the cooling for that portion of the fuel rod. And hence, uh, I'm not sure if it went critical or not. I, I think it, well, it certainly went critical because the tube rod, no, no heat removal, basically the fuel rods and cooling pipe melted, okay, and that means the fuel contacted with each other, were in contact with each other. And it could have gone critical and uh, oh, I've been, yeah. I don't know exactly all the details. What I just told you may not actually have what happened, but what I just told you is in the realm of possibilities. So particles, small particles have a habit of agglomerating and have the capability of closing off lot, much larger pipes. Okay, example was this accident. You didn't hear about it. Right. It's not well known. Okay. High resistance of type me can be avoided. Right. So you want to four sizes much larger than the average particle. How about that? Again, the idea that small particles can close off large pore sizes or, excuse me, are filtered. Permeability of material is important. Pressure drop across the medium is power. Requirements of the pump. Pressure drop times volumetric flow rate is power. So what else do we have? And cleaning of the medium is critical. Pore size measurements, retention, pore size. Measuring the pore size is even difficult. So what do we got in here? You have uh, measurements for various pore sizes. Measurements, various techniques can be done. Uh, bubble test, permeability test, bubble test description. Uh, uh, not for a multi filament. So it works well with single filament, right? monofilament. So now you got to worry about it. doesn't work so well with multifilament. Then you got mercury intrusion methods, poor size measurements, looking for trends, not absolutes. Replacement media with performance original media, new versus old concepts, more engineering and trend comparisons, too much science. <laughs> right? When I say too much science, yes, and there is people who are over scienced. They are over scienced. My colleagues tend to be scientists rather than engineers. 
And I joke with them that they're over-scienced. Much like people are over-sexed, people can be over-scienced. Sorry, people. I mean, it's just the way life people are anyway. It's all cleaning, resistance. You want 10% mean cake resistance in the total. Let's see where else were we in here. Again, I recommend going through the stuff yourself. Expect disagreements and inaccuracies. Uh, I'm not sure if I misspelled poor Darcy there or not. I think the E is not there, if I'm not mistaken. Depends. Anyway, I'll leave you with uh, your own reading for that book, fantastic book. And use medium. Okay. Obviously, your medium medium is going to be used. So, uh, despite cleaning, deterioration of filter cloth is inevitable. Deterioration follows a new, a unique path. Are you monitoring that? When do you change out your medium? Interesting questions. Anyway. Are you, do you have the correct medium? Anyway, let's go on to pretreatments. And again, I'm not going to go through the weeds on this. I'll do a quick, uh, quick review here, but to pretreatments, obviously you're trying to alternate or change the nature of the particle size, perhaps viscosity. You're trying to minimize blinding. You're trying to minimize bleed, bleeding. So you want to try to increase the permeability of the cake. You have pre coats Less prone to blockage. pre coats let you cut it off. Right? Foreign flocks, well, let's go on here. You got coagulation and flocculation. Coagulation phenomena brought about by reducing the double layer repulsion between particles. Particles are suspended in electric electrolytic solution change, a change in the nature and concentration of the ions. Then you have uh, flocculation, which is often a mystery, right? You try to aggregate particles together using long chain pile molecules, bridging lines. So if I take a look, much confusion, there's compli complications by technical, uh, technical societies, different ways in which terms are used in different ways. Anyway, what's what? Well, coagulation, let's take a look at sodium, calcium, and aluminum effects. These are aluminum ions. So what do we have here? Well, we have the concentration of the coagulant, right? So this is turbidity measurements. So if I'm trying to clean my process, make it clear, I want zero turbidity, right? Okay. So if I come along and zero turbidity is, sits up here, so I have different concentrations. Sodium uh, ion will be give me this curve. Turbidity, it's a abrupt curve. Uh, calcium gives me this curve. Uh, aluminum will give me this curve. Now, if I go to this compound, geez, oh man, I have to really get a real sharp point. And if I go to, say, a hydroxide, I may have this here, hydrolyzed here. Or if I go to polyacrylic amine, me, I will have this turbidity. Anyway, basically that would be uh, coagulation type effects. Effects that are almost in, independent of solid surface present. Effects increases with charge, right? Plus three was better. Than... Down here, I got a picture of bridging flock. Now that's pretty good. 
I got a couple of uh, polymer molecules holding. I got what? Three. I got this one. I have this one. Three attachments there. I have two attachments there. And I have two or three attachments there. So this is what you'd like. You have a long chain polymer molecule. Anyway, again, I don't want to go in detail. The best thing I just wanted you to do. See, A and B of that previous slide has been discussed. C and D as well. And uh, coagulation, uh, colloidal stability and coagulants. Basically, uh, dipole dipole moments, induced dipole interactions, whatever. So you have this uh, chemical potential sitting here, stabilized particles, stabilized maybe at this point. So you have repulsion and attraction and coagulated particles may look like that. You have a potential energy curve. Anyway, I give you an idea of the double layer. You have more or less a random type of phenomena here. However, this positively charged surface comes along and starts to attract the minuses. So you have a minus, 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 minus. Only have two positives. It can get really bad when I have a minus surface and all positives, right? So I have the solid, which has a, a negative surface, and I have a uh, positive. And then I have the mainstream, and I'm measuring uh, the surface potential or what is called the zeta potential. Now, just there's a few comments. On YouTube, there's this fantastic video on particles and microgravity. You type in particles and microgravity, and they got this plastic pouch. And they squeeze the plastic pouch, and it has in it white particles floating around. And they're very easily dispersed. So you start with these white particles being dispersed uniformly. And then over time, you hold it. Over time, you see the particles start to flock together or coagulate together or whatever you would want to call it. It's not flocked, I don't think. But it's coagulation. So it's, it's interesting that the surface charges exists on these particles and they attract the opposite charge on the other particles. So that may be the agglomeration mechanism. I find it really great. So let's see what else we have. We have the electric double layer. We have the zeta potential. Okay. And so you have in fact, the pH on the zeta potential. You have it around what is called, what is it, the zero point? Actions of hydrolyzing salts. Right. Anyway, action of polymeric flocculants. Say the potential is not important, All right? You have long chain polymer molecules, right? Polyelectrolytes can be neutral and still have efficiency. The problem with flocculation is that you got to do it just right. Here's the example to uh, talk about. You have particles up here and you got flock, flocking polymers here. Okay, so you mix them together. And that requires some effort because you don't want to rip these particles, these long chain polymer molecules apart. You want to gently mix them with very low shear. So at some point, uh, they become attached to the individual particles and their strings are further on out. Now then, if this can, this can continue and wind up in three different states. It can wind up in a state looking like this, where the particles are not, the, uh, the polymer chains are not interacting. Polymer chain of one particle is not interacting with another particle. Or uh, with time, these uh, particles here, this probably is excessive. You got to watch out for concentration, right, of the polymer chains. If over time, uh, no interaction takes place, um, 
and all the chains collapse down on the surface of the particle. And this is what you want. You want just right type of situation where the polymer chains are there and can touch, touch other particles. And the compression going on, right? You start out with something looking like that, which would probably be a disaster. Then you have this, and this is what you want, such that you generate this. Okay, with further time, this collapses into this, and this thing collapses into that. Very little reach distance, right? So you're looking for uh, long loops, so you can attach on the other particles. So that means that uh, kind of touchy here, right? Kind of touchy. Bridge formation, this is what basically described in this. Uh, patch flocculation, hmm. Ready to coagulation, whatnot. Believe it or not, uh, economic usage for uh, polymer added for flocculation is very small, uh, less than 0.1 pounds per ton. The optimum may actually be up around 0.3 per ton. So I'm not sure how expensive these are, but it's kind of interesting that it is an optimum. As I said, optimums tend to be very broad and flat. Effects of agitation on flocculants, uh, flocculation. Number of mixes. Hmm. Wonder what they mean by that. Number of mixes. Number of rotations. Uh, further on down, you have three, three chemical compositions, non-ionic, anionic, and cationic, different uh, compounds. And this is kind of cool here. Uh, you have a flocculated system, and that makes the particle size real large. And so it settles quickly. It uh, particles will sink if they're larger. If they're not large, uh, unflocculated, you'll still have a cloudy zone up here. You'll form a nice compact bed here, less so here. You'll have less clarity here. You'll have great clarity here. And eventually you'll wind up looking like this at the end. So the settling rate curve changes. This settling rate is nice and crisp. This settling rate would be more difficult to measure. Anyway, let's see what else we got. Let's go back. We have that. We got use of flocculants. Again, good references that book. Comparison properties of dispersed, coagulated, and flocculated slurries. Now, this is a nice, nice summary here. Dispersed sur slurries, uh, clarity, very poor. Coagulated slurry, very uh, good. Flocculated slurry, good. Well, it's poor to good. Remember, the polymer molecule has to get to the finer particles, and it may not. Settling rate, you have fast and fair. Reagent, high, low, high quantities. Filtration rate, uh, fair, fast, slow to fast. Take moisture, well, it's low. Probably a denser cake, obviously, if it's low moisture. Higher moisture content for flocculates. That's what you want. You want a, a cake that has higher moisture is also one that formed uh, at basically it's more porous, so it's much easier. Uh, filtration was not difficult. If you got something that uh, 
has low moisture content. That was a difficult to filter filter cake, right? Anyway, uh, flexibility of use, very little. Hi. Pollution and pH change often, seldom. Anyway, coagulated versus flocculated. Tendency is flocculated systems. Uh, are probably more advantageous. Filter aid range from one to 10%. Well, anyway, coagulation, filter eggs, coagulants and flocculants expand the cake. So cake volume may be optimized. Uh, I've got to find something in here we need to cover as well. See if I can find it, sorry. Doesn't hurt to do a little studying and learning. As I said earlier, uh, the way you got a 600 page book. And, uh, you know, when's the last time you read a technical book? Well, not since college. Well, reading a technical book is not really all that hard. First off, you got to get a good technical book, you know, and then uh, you read 10 pages a night. Do a little bit at a time. Uh, maybe you take notes, maybe you don't. 600-page uh, book, 10 pages a night, that's 60 days. And away you go. After you read one technical book, read another. Go through the journal articles. Now, the problem with flocculation is uh, getting the right mix. Design for flocculators, this uh, Camp and Stein developed a G variable. The G is power per volume, right? power per volume, which is standard in the mixing area, uh, times viscosity. Now, uh, looking at this, I would say that the viscosity is in the denominator, right? Uh, the half power. Power input viscosity. Anyway, the GT now, I got GT times T time, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, represents the best uh, operating conditions with G ranging from 10 to 100 reciprocal seconds. So the idea of power per volume, power here is. Uh, might be the viscosity times velocity squared uh, diameter to the, to the cube. It's not necessarily the, since you're mixing, you got to deal with mixing power to numbers. And power is proportional viscosity, rotational speed squared, diameter cubed. So you might, uh, Pay attention to that, what that actually is. And they give you a range at which you mix, but you don't overmix. You just mix just right. Okay. And you can think of this as uh, mixing uh, egg whites. If I take egg whites, I can beat them, beat them, beat them, beat them, beat them, and I get meringue. However, if I continue to beat them, or there are some food substances that I can cause foaming, if I continue to beat them, the foam disappears again. They become overbeaten. So there is a certain range that you have to hit. And this is, since it's reciprocal time, I have an idea that this might be a measure of the shear rate level that you want to have occur when you're making uh, flocculants. Higher G's, a uh, flocculant would be disrupted by the shear stresses or shear, shear rates. Lower the flocculants may not be formed fast enough. So the operating effect on G. Salinate versus polymer additive has an optimum. Optimum concentration is grossly uneconomic. This is the idea here, the settling rate. 
optimum over here. This is where economic usages. And it says it's grossly uneconomic. Well, the problem with economics is that it does change quite a bit. So from time to time, what was expensive is now cheap. And what was cheap is often no longer available, right? So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to close out here and I leave you with this message here. Happy filtration, with happy filtering to you. And again, uh, you have an assignment is to go find this book, use book on Amazon or whatever online vendor you have, put in your purchase and it's a real thick book. <laughs> and that's your reading assignment upon finishing this course. And after you read that book, you too can understand filtration medium. As if your company really cares, right? The company only wants, I shouldn't say things like that. That's bad. Anyway, you have a good day. And I appreciate you listening to me all the way to the bitter end. And may you have a happy life. Thank you. Bye-bye.